So if you want to come standing, if you have a mat in your room, feel free to stay on, stand on your mat or just come standing on your floor, ground all four corners of your feet into the earth. Palms are down by your side. You can have them face forward. Go ahead, unclench your teeth, unclench your jaw. Soft, tiny space in the middle of the eyebrow where we tend to hold a lot of stress and tension. And just sit here and relax just for a minute. Allow the shoulders to relax. Now let's go ahead and just take in a couple of inhales, inhale, and then exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Then we inhale our arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale them down to the center. Then inhale, arms lift back up, up and around, touch. Exhale, down to heart center, warming up the shoulders. Inhale, back up, you got it. Palms touch. Exhale, hands back down, center. One more time. Inhale, arms lift up. Then back down, heart center. Inhale, our arms up. Let's go ahead and grab a hold of the left wrist. And we're going to side bend over to the right side, keeping our hips towards from as much as possible. Nice big side body stretch on the left. If you like, keep underneath that left arm. And we're stretching here and remember to breathe. Couple more breaths here. And come back up to center. We're just going to switch out hand placement. So now right wrist, stand up nice and tall, side bend over to the opposite direction. Opening up the right side of the body, creating space as if you've been sitting all day, this is perfect. Then inhale, hands back up to center. We're going to take them back behind our back and inner finger like so, and fist down to the earth, inhale, lift up heart. Back bending here. And then slowly release those hands. And we're going to goal post our arms like so. And then the exhale, we're going to bring our arms together. Inhale, we'll open them back up to a balloon. Then exhale, the balloon deflating. Inhale, it opens back up. And exhale. And inhale. And then exhale. Bringing them together. And we're just going to give ourselves a little hug. So reaching onto our shoulders, walking our fingertips towards the middle of our back. Close, we can get them to the shoulder blade. This is a great way to open the shoulders nice and tall. So you can start with either the right arm on top or the left. We're going to switch out. Continue to breathe here. And then inhale, open back up, goal post those arms, pressing the shoulder blades together, kind of giving your spine a mini massage, lifting up the chest and heart. And then coming back together, we're going to give ourselves that nice big hug once again, just putting the upper arm on top. And continue to breathe. Inhaling and exhaling, focusing on the breath. Go of everything that's going on outside of the face. Taking moments to stretch your body, find a space of mindfulness and peace. And then in and back up, go pull those shoulder blades, lift the chest and heart. Beautiful. And then we're gonna inhale our arms up overhead, palms touch. Then exhale, we're gonna forward fold. And let's just take a moment to hang out here. Step your feet a little bit wider than hip distance apart. Put a bend in the knees. Allow your torso to come to the top of the thighs as much as possible. 
And you can just hang out here, allow your head and neck to release and relax. If you want, you can grab opposite elbows. But this is a great way to stretch out the back, stretch out the backs of the legs. Perfect if you've been sitting. Just soften into this forward fold a little bit more. Then we're gonna bring our left hand on the floor mat in front of our face. Put a little bend in that left knee, then inhale, wave that right arm up. So we're twisting open to the right and breathing here. And then bringing that right hand down in front of our face, putting a micro bend in the right knee. Inhale, wave the left arm up and open. Then come back down, still forward in that forward fold. Bring your hands to your hips. We're gonna roll up one vertebrae at a time, really, really slow. Head is gonna be the last thing to lift. Inhale, arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. So we're gonna build a little flow here. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, we fold in. Inhale, hands to shins or knees, peek forward. Exhale, fold and let it go. Then inhale, back up. Palms touch, exhale, hands to the earth. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, we fold in. Inhale, halfway lift once again, peek forward. Exhale, fold and let it go. Allow yourself to hang here for just a moment. Then inhale all the way back up to standing, palms touch overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more time, inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, we fold in. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins or knees, peek forward. Exhale, fold and let it go. Then inhale all the way up to standing. And this time we're gonna keep our hips forward. We're gonna bring that left arm forward and just extend the right arm back. Breathing here. Few more breaths. And inhale, both arms up. And then we're gonna switch it out, right arm forward, left arm back. Then inhale, both arms up. Interlace your fingers and take a little back bend, lift up to the chest and heart. Press your hips forward and lean back just as far as you like to go. Then come back to neutral. Exhale, hands to heart center. And then we're gonna go ahead and just step our feet apart. So like a little wide leg stance. We can start by bringing our hands to our hips. We're gonna exhale and fold in. So wide leg forward fold is what we have here. Once again, if you need to put a micro bend in the knees, if you're feeling any, feeling any pulling or pinching back behind the knees, hang out here for just a moment. And now let's take that left hand over to the right foot. So just a little twist here. And then if you like, you can raise that right arm and twist a little more. Or just bring that right hand to the hip, you decide. Once again, release it, let it go, come back to center. Allow you just to hang here, unclench your teeth, soften the face. Now take that right hand over to the left ankle, twisting in here. And once again, if you'd like, you can raise that left hand up or bring the left hand to the hip, you decide.
and then both hands back to the mat. And then we're gonna do what is called Skandasana or a little ski. So we're gonna bend to that left knee, come onto the heel of the right foot, straighten the right leg, and just feel a nice big stretch at the back of the right leg. Breathing here. And then coming back to that forward fold as we side bend over to the right knee, turning onto the heel of the left foot and breathing here. And then come back to center. Maybe take your peace fingers and grab a hold of your big toes and just allow yourself to hang in here. Then bring your hands to your hips. Once again, inhale, come up slowly, one vertebra at a time, head's the last thing to lift. We can step our feet together. And just Take a moment to maybe pedal out the legs, move the hips around. Beautiful. And then we're gonna do a little balancing just to open up the hips a little bit. This is what we call tree pose. So we have three options for tree. You could do your, my favorite kickstand is just placing that heel right above the ankle of the opposite foot. You can probably bring it to the shin or you can bring it to the inside of the thigh to stay away from the knee. Also, if you have a wall or a chair and you need to use support, feel free to do so. So let's just show you what that is really quick. We have just a few moments. So inhale, putting all our weight into the right foot. Inhale, lift with left knee up. Set up for your variation of tree. So just balancing on one leg for just a moment opening up that hip, let it go, release. Switching to the opposite side. Let it go and release. And then inhale, arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. And just take a moment to take a few breaths here as we close out our stretching portion of this conference. Allow your shoulders to relax. Once again, unclench your teeth, soften your face. Let's take a nice big inhale together and then open the mouth and let it go. Exhale. One more nice big inhale in through the nose. And exhale, let it go. Thank you for joining me this afternoon for a stretch. Hope to see you again later. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We will get started in just a second here. Switching gears from our stretch. Yeah, that was very relaxing. I came in at the end there. That was lovely. I have to tell you, I have stretched and moved more today than I have in like a month. Good really? for you. It's been pretty fabulous. I like, we started a day off with like a, 
I already forgot the name of it, but a yoga thing that I had never done before. And I thought I had done all the yoga, but uh, Nidra, Yoga Nidra, we laid down. I probably have done it. I just didn't know. <laughs> um, yeah, right, down, right? I know. And, and we have, it's, there's been a lot of stretching and bending going That's on. That's great. Yeah. Good. That's the point, right? I'm, well, um, if you guys can hear me, I'm going to have to try and log out and log back in. For some reason, my camera is not working. So I'm going to try and make that work. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We'll be here. Hi, Paulina. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. I know it just, that just made me want to stretch. I should have gotten up and done because <laughs> now I'm like, ah, well, while we all wait for Pippa, I'll lead us through. No, I'm just kidding. I will not lead us through. <laughs> But definitely stretch if you have not yet today. I'm telling you, my back feels like a million dollars. And all I did was stretch like a total of- It's uh, real. It's minutes. not, they're not making that up. No, we have got to do that more often. Yeah. I think I'm gonna, we're just going to start every like in the maven or end or something. I don't know. We, with like moving. Because I think I forget to the whole rest of the day. So, you know, we have to get it in where we can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You like that. Kylie's into it. Okay. Cool. We'll do that. You just have to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> She'll remind you. Hopefully Pippa will resolve her technical difficulties. But if not, I'll just, you know, pull up a photo or something of her. I'll just send a link so you can all see her face. So are we live right now? Like publicly? We are. Live? Everyone is, everyone's just anxiously waiting. To That's why I was like, oh wait, people can see me, can't they? <laughs> you never know with me. You want to let me know that I'm no, on, it's on not. Don't real. Wanna, don't want to do anything weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, we want, we want to get weird. We like, I mean, you're, you've come to the right place. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, Pippa's going to come back and be like, I'm sorry. What is this panel? Did I put my other <laughs> one? Paulina and I have taken it like to a whole different place. A whole other thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, I feel like if anyone was going to do it, it probably would be you and me. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's see your nails. Ooh, those are pretty. City Nail Bar on Market. And uh, I live right here, but yeah, they're awesome. I, my first manicure in over a year. Because as of now, as of the day I got it, I was two weeks out from my second shot. And I was like, somebody's going to get her nails done. And she's going big and long. And uh, I decided, I also said, because then yesterday, I, I was like told to my friends, I was like, am I a youth now? I think I'm a youth. I think I'm a young <laughs> person again. And, um, and then last night, Selena Gomez posted this photo because she like dyed her hair blonde too which looks amazing but she had Wait, like that was selena hair. gomez yeah oh man on I'm my so instagram yeah. i saw the picture and i'm like who the heck is that girl wow selena but i was like oh, i'm right in touch with the young minds of america yes you are <laughs> it's all i ever want it's just to be i need you know, a tutorial on how to be better at that the of wisdom of now i would like for my brain to stay like knowing the things it knows now but also i have regressed to like full teenage dumb again i was always kind of there i never really grew up but the, the pandy really took took me back <laughs> so now i just cosplay like uh young people <laughs> i think it sounds wonderful i don't know I'm all about it. It works for me. I was like, is this my midlife crisis? Okay. I feel like there's worse things I could do. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Hi, Pippa. Hi, Are Pippa. Can we see you? For some reason, my camera is still not connecting and I have another Zoom after your one. So this is a real pain. I have no idea what's going on. I'm trying to uh, figure out why it's doing this to me today now. Of all days. Of course. Of all days. days. It happens, um, but we can hear you, so that's okay. So we can, <laughs> we can work with that. Yep, absolutely. It's called Murphy's Law. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So true, so true. Well, I will quickly go ahead. Abby Gardner is our amazing executive editor at Indie Maven. For those of you who don't know her, she is where the magic happens for all of our content, website, newsletter. Um, so thank you, Abby. She's also our moderator today. So I'll mm -hmm. let... 
you take it from here. Yes, thank you. I'm so, I'm, I wish I could see all of you, but I know you're out there. So that is wonderful. Um, I'm just so, it's so heartening to see how many people wanted to come to this conference. So we're all so excited. Um, and today we're gonna be here to talk a little bit about chat about when your passion pushes back, which I think we can all relate to in kind of probably big ways and small ways. Um, you know, it nothing seems to come easy. Uh, I mean, I'm a person who's been in the media business since the late 90s. So I've definitely had what I thought my career was going to look like and then what it looks like now. It's pushed back at me of many, many times over the years, but we're really lucky to have two women um, here who I, I wanna hear more from, not from me, but um, who have really ha paved their own path in their respective um, industries and certainly dealt with more than a few challenges and kind of didn't let it stop them and kept persevering. And so we're gonna chat a little bit about, about that, but I'll introduce them first. So Pippa, who we can hear but cannot see, Pippa Mann, who is a British racing driver. She has competed in the Indy 500 seven times. That's so baller, that's so dope. Um, she currently races in a, a variety of um, sports car series and including an all-female team in Germany, which is also so cool. Um, and she's one of the athlete leaders of Shift Up Now, a collective of women in motorsport working together to kind of change the game. And another person changing the game is Pauline Oshroff, who you may know from her work as a photographer, a creative director. She's also the executive director of Pattern. Uh, she's the mother of a 12 year old, a 14 year old. She manages her husband's public speaking career. And then the joke in her spare time also is the editor in chief of Pattern, the magazine Pattern. So, you know, all that extra spare time. So welcome to both of you. Um, I, I really think you're both you're both true trailblazers in your in your fields, and also our our city and our community are both better for for having having both of you around. So, um, I'll just kick it off with Pippa. Um, I can't even imagine how much pushback you have probably felt over the course of however long you, when, once you decided you wanted to to be a racing driver um, in a field that is still so male dominated. Um, I'm, I'm sure you, I just can't even imagine. So what, what drives you to push through that? Like what, what are maybe some examples of that? And then what drives you to drive, sorry, I guess pun intended, um, drives you to push, to push through that and, and, and keep moving forward? I think the biggest thing is, is I'm incredibly lucky to be racing at a time where we've seen an enormous amount of progress for women in motorsport. Um, there are all sorts of initiatives like Shift Up Now where women are banding together to try and work together to make things happen. And one of the biggest things that, you know, started changing over 40 years ago when Janet Guthrie first made the Indianapolis 500 is that the teams and our competitors now view us as race car drivers, right? So, so this was the first really big thing. Um, one of the tough things that there is still to overcome and the reason why groups like Shift Up now exist and why so many women are trying to band together to do things en masse in groups in motorsport is that the funding for women in motorsport is still an issue. Now, this is an issue that almost all women's sports still face, um, but with motorsport being so unique and men and women competing as equals, you know, we're fighting just as hard as all of the other women's sports who are also looking for funding to try and help some of the best talented female racers get funded to stay in seats and keep racing. Because let's face it, unlike all other sports out there, motorsport is not just about, um, behind, about talent behind the wheel. We, we can argue it should be all day long and you know, race fans have had this debate for eons, but, but it never was and it never has been, unfortunately. The, uh, the, the financial aspect of motorsport has, has always been and will always be incredibly tough. So trying to reach more companies who have female CEOs, CMOs, CFOs who are willing to back female athletes is a big part of where we need to go next and what we're trying to push for next. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I hadn't really thought about that financial component is so important to be able to do the tech and the, and the work on the, on the car and the research and all of that. And Polina, like I, I would say you have done so much to bring the, the small yet thriving and growing it by the day creative community in Indy 
kind of out of the shadows and into the into the light. And that's, I'm sure not always been easy. I, I think we all love Indianapolis. It's a great city, but I don't think that that has been a, a part of the city that that has that has had that light shined on it. And you, your work kind of is trying to, to push that forward. And so what have been some of the obstacles that, that you faced and how do you, how do you approach those challenges and kind of, cause you, you never stop. You just keep doing more and more. <laughs> you just keep adding to that resume. Yeah, but the, the going, the ongoing joke with me is that I'm like the Terminator in that first movie, you know, where like, it's just the head and the arm <laughs> still like, <laughs> that's kind of me. Um, yeah, so creative, economy is the passion that I have and what I've been working on. Uh, it didn't start out with me knowing what it was, but that's kind of what I've honed in on. And it's been a challenge because it's not an industry that has traditionally gotten any attention or funding or support from the economic development side here in Indianapolis. And so it's very much again about the money. Uh, and just trying to find a way to sustain the effort, right? Because everybody that is engaged in creating, um, we have so much talent, but also there's not, these are not people and groups and businesses that have a lot of money behind them, right? Um, because the, the patrons aren't here. So the people that are willing to buy and spend on say a custom made suit, or a piece of art, uh, people prioritize other things. And so it's been a mix of trying to educate citizens and the leaders and getting them to understand why um, the arts and the artistic community and the people that participate in it are vitally important to the city. That has been a huge challenge, just figuring out how to show the impact. Like if mm -hmm. you invest in this, here's what the payoff is going to be. In a lot of ways, it's intangible, right? And it takes many, many years. And so here I am, you know, into my 11th year of doing this, often feeling like I haven't even made a dent in the problem, but that's what it takes. You have to be in it for the long haul. Yeah, and for either one of you, so what, I, I we all have days where you're just like, I don't know if I can, I, maybe this isn't worth it, right? Like maybe I, I picked the wrong battle or, you know, so what do you, um, what do you do to pick yourself back up and, 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 and remind yourself of, I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Remind yourself why you're doing it in the first place, but what kind of like, what mentality, what do you have to do to get back to the space so you can do the work? I'll be honest. Some days it's really, really hard. Um, I would love to tell you that there was, you know, a, a magic ingredient, but some days you don't want to get up and some days you get incredibly frustrated and you do sit there and you think what is the point why am I doing this to run into the same answers again and again and again but then you remind yourself that unless someone does it nothing's going to change and yeah. so that's the driving force is if I don't get back up and I don't keep doing this what changes for those who come next what changes if I don't get back up yeah 100 yeah. percent. I think it's important to know your why why you're in it, right? And I think for me, it's also being really conscious about uh, acknowledging and embracing the fact that it's not about me. Like, I'm not doing this for my own gain. I'm not looking for glory or even acknowledgement or awards. It is because, you know, it needs to be done and somebody has to do it. And in this moment in time, that job has somehow fallen to me. And will I, you know, doing this forever no but hopefully i'll leave things better than i found them and so i have been fortunate in a couple of ways because um sometimes you know a reason there any there, there's a reason to do anything right sometimes we do it because it feels good and sometimes we do it because it's the right thing to do i'm fortunate in that with pattern those two things actually work together if the things that i'm doing feel good to me and they are also the right thing to do and so that mm -hmm. really um, sustains me a lot of the time. That and my husband, who's a saint and has been just incredibly supportive for this entire thing. So God bless him. Yes, absolutely. I mean, wherever that support come, comes from, right? Like everybody needs it. And especially when you're going through a challenging time. Um, I was wondering, are there, have there been moments, because I sometimes find 
even maybe when I come out the other side of the really challenging time, I can look back and be kind of heartened by some part of it or some lesson that I learned or a person that I met or someone who helped me. Have there been moments like that for you too? Because it, it feels hard, but there can also be moments of breakthrough and like a hopefulness too that come from that. Has that been your experience too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that the thing with pattern is that generally speaking, the response from our, the people who consume the product, if you will, is always incredibly positive. Like we really need this. We love that you're doing this. It's giving us hope that Indianapolis can be that city that we imagine it can be with all that potential being fully um, actualized. And so that is always incredibly helpful, but also like sometimes when you are in a challenging spot, whether it's with a career or a relationship or something like trying to build an industry or make a change on a very broad scale, sometimes there's moments where you're like, well, this is terrible and I feel terrible and I guess this is how it's going to be. But then it passes, right? Mm -hmm. Everything passes. And as long as you're moving forward, there will be change and there will be opportunities. And you just have to keep reminding yourself that in this moment, even though I feel stuck, if I just keep going, I'm going to get to that other side. And then I don't know what's on the other side, but it could be amazing. It could be like the light at the end of the tunnel. So right. that's, that's what keeps me going. And I think for me, it's at the moment, we're having to take relatively small victories, but it's all of the small victories. And as Polina says, it's not just the victories for yourself or the group specifically that I work with, it's the small victories for women in motorsport as a whole. So here's a couple of examples. Um, with Shift Up Now, which is the group of women whom I work with, we landed our first major corporate partner this, this year with Haggerty. Um, so we have several racers who have the opportunity to keep racing this year as a result of that partnership with Haggerty and their involvement with us, which is really, really cool. But then the wins on the bigger scale, one which affects none of us directly, but affects all of us who are racing drivers in motorsport directly simply by the fact it happened, is the amazing uh, Beth Peretta-led Peretta Autosport effort at this year's Indianapolis 500 for Simona Di Silvestro, which is a combination of not only a female driver and a female team owner, but they're also trying to bring in as many female crew members as possible into that organization at the same time too. And so that to me was a huge win. And am I gutted that, you know, I, I didn't get to be the driver yet? Yes, obviously I am absolutely gutted. It didn't get to me, be me, but at the same time, Simona is incredible and seeing this happen and come together in my sport is really cool. And it's a step forward for all of us. Absolutely. And that's such a great, you know, and I think it's great to acknowledge that, hey, I wish it would have been me. Like, that's an okay thing to feel too. And I think as women, sometimes we have trouble saying that, like, that's fine. And you can, you can, two things can be true. You can wish it was you and be so happy it happened for, for this other person too. Um, I see a question for Polina from Renee here. She said, it seems the music industry in Indy is starting to see more attention on how it contributes to making us a great city through some good partnerships. Who do you see as your partners in making the same thing happen with, with some of the work that, that you're doing? Um, like organizationally? Yeah, I don't know. Or just like, where, where do you seek that support too? Like, well, you're like Pippa was just mentioning some of that, that funding, the Haggerty and the, and the a female owns, uh, racing team like where where are some of the places that that for pattern and the work you're doing that you that you seek out that that communal support sure well i i you know where i've seen support from i guess peers would be like gang gang and indiana mm -hmm. fashion foundation um you know big car some of the other cultural and arts focused organizations here as the center of the arts or the city industrial complex i think that we have a really really it's a small but it's a strong and incredibly supportive ecosystem of artists and creatives and i think we kind of have to we have to have almost our own consortium um and our own network to elevate the voices of each other's uh, I guess constituents, if you will, right? Because there's, you know, there's music and there's fashion and there is art and all those types of things. And um, you know, the Arts Council has been also super supportive. So there's definitely a lot of different organizations, and 
just trying to grow that network as, as, as much and as hard as we can. Um, yeah, and do you just like, I mean, proverbially like knock on doors and cold call, yeah, is it? Pretty much, pretty much. And I think that like, there's also, to me, there's sort of been this sort of, uh, I guess a, di a diversion of support. Like I, I categorize it differently. I, verbally like pat on the back support you know we've gotten from everybody right, right. and visit indy and downtown indy and you know the chamber um but then there's a point where like you want to see that support translated and into actual like tangible support aka dollars and so that that part has been a little harder to get to and so that's that's what I'm working on right now. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. To kind of jump in as to what Paulina yeah, is saying as well. Works. So many people tell us that you know they want to support women in motorsport. They absolutely support women, strong women. They think what we're doing is great. Yeah. Trying to get these brands to take that step and actually spend the money that that takes to actually support women in motorsport, as opposed to just paying lip service to the fact that they support women. Um, it's really, really tough. And I think a fantastic example of this, um, I don't know if you'll remember, but several years ago, always ran Like a Girl commercials during the Super Bowl. Yes. They were the most incredible commercials. I managed to get to the right people at always. Like the, the right people who had commissioned those commercials because how cool would it have been to have that entire campaign embodied by a female race car driver driving like a girl at the Indianapolis 500? Yeah. And they couldn't make the connection. To them, there was no connection between their commercials and a real live sports person actually doing something in a male dominated sport where the term like a girl has traditionally been used negatively. They, yeah. they couldn't see any correlation at all. There was just this head scratching of like, well, you know, this is interesting, but it's, what, 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 why, why does this pertain to what we're doing? And, and I didn't know, I didn't, but, and these were two women. I was not talking to two men. And I, I, I'm still flabbergasted to this day that that was sort of the end point. The end point was not, we don't have the funding for that right now. The end point was, but the, the end point was, we don't understand the correlation between our brand messaging and what you're suggesting to us. And I, if you guys could see my face right now, you would see sort of the way I'm waving my hands around and um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, flabbergasted is the correct term. And I, I, I left me speechless. I, I didn't know what to say or do, or, and that was one of those sort of, you know, kicks that we were talking about. And I'm like, that, that, the, uh, <laughs> You're like, has no one ever, ins you've never heard someone insult someone's driving by saying that it's because they're female? Like there's a literal insult. And then you're like, I do this sport. Oh, that's, I'm furious on your behalf. Like the latest. <laughs> but, 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 there's, there's so many stories like that, as Polina says. Um, and you know, we, we'd shift up now specifically it, this little organization we've created. Um, we're actually a membership based organization because the entire way we keep the lights on all year is through, uh, you know, $100 per person per year to help us keep the lights on. And in return for the $100, we do, you know, all sorts of small things we can for our members. But at this point in time, because we're so new and so young, they're effectively there because they want to be and they want to help us. Mm -hmm. The amount of people who told us this was an incredible idea and how hard it has been to drum up the membership support is a microcosm in a much smaller way of exactly what that looks like. Like, this is great, but a hundred bucks a year? No, I, I don't like the idea of a hundred bucks a year. Um, so right. yes, Polina, I feel your pain personally. Yeah, we could probably spend a really, really long time. And, um, you know, and, and it's hard because like, it's a double-edged sword because you wanna, you wanna call out these organizations or entities publicly, but then you're just kind of chopping your own legs out of under yourself, especially yeah. in a small market like Indianapolis. Um, and absolutely, absolutely, yep, and you know, and yeah. I somehow doubt the marketing people from Always are actually watching this. And if they are like, hi, this is your opportunity to put it right. I still think this is a great campaign. And I'd still love to do it in the future because I think that this entire idea rocks. Like changing the connotation of what it means to drive like a girl is pretty important. Yeah. Well, I think what you're both trying to do is like real intrinsic and systemic like behavior change and thought change. And, and Pippa, that example is such a perfect one of like, Oh, it's so ingrained, especially like with your sport in particular. It's like, oh, I can understand it in this sport, but I can't understand it in this. Or I can understand 
I, I like what you're doing, but that's all, that's all I can give you, you know? And the fact that both of you are just pushing the ball forward um, every single day with the work you do. And really, I mean, it, it's hard to try to change. I mean, we all have internalized things uh, about what you think about what the arts are, what what a female race car driver is or whatever. And, it, and you guys are out there like doing the work and, and getting it done. Um, so I think it's also great because you've given us some ways that we could support you and, and, in your work, um, both of you and kind of what what's on the horizon like, what's the next big thing for each of you to conquer? What's the next big mountain to climb? You know, for me, it's just uh, continuing the slow growth of the organization, right? And also, you know, at this point, I, I think I have to reckon, you know, very realistically with the idea that pattern needs to be not about Indianapolis, right? not to take anything away from the artists and the creatives that live in the city, but in order for us to grow and to, to actually, you know, add and offer the support that we need to as a platform to people living here, we have to go outside the borders of the state, um, you know, region, maybe regionally or nationally, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, you know, I've kind of turned over pretty much every rock in this town and yeah not gotten the support that this needs and it deserves and so you know now it's like let's find other people who understand what we're trying to do and appreciate it and value it and then you know make some magic happen that way love it and what about you pippa so i think for me it's sort of a threefold plan really the first is continuing to grow shift up now um so continuing to grow our membership base, continuing to grow the value we're able to give back to our members and continuing to grow that brand value the people are starting within motorsport to recognize Shift Up now. They're starting to recognize our name. They're starting to recognize our logo. And they're starting to understand that we stand for something. So for that, step one is continuing all of that. Um, step two is obviously to try and persuade more brands like Haggerty to come on board and do more things with this so that we can make a more sustainable difference to our races. Um, you know, it, in a pie in the sky ideal world, if we had, you know, brands giving us grants where we could assign, you know, $25,000 to this racer and $25,000 to this racer. Yes, those are relatively small associate sponsorships in the scheme of racing because racing is so ridiculously expensive, but it makes a difference to those racers when we're able to literally help them stay in the race seats each year. And then for Pippa Man personally, I'm trying to look for things for myself. You know, I want to be part of the eight hour race at Indianapolis Motor Speedway this fall. I'm not going to be part of the Indy 500 this year, but I'd love to be back at that race next year. I'm driving so many things and I'm really enjoying my career as a coach and co-driver, but I, I don't know that I'm done with the Indy 500 yet. You know, I, I want to find a way back to that race. So that's the, that's the sort of the third prong for me. Um, so the first two are all about shift up now. And then in the back of my mind, there's this little thing saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep pushing for myself too here. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Well, I could go on forever. You guys, I could pick your brains forever because I think that you both uh, are just do fascinating work. And I, I am so thankful that you came to chat with us today and awesome. share some of that advice and wisdom and just like your experience um, with our Maven. So thank you, Pippa, and thank you, Polina. And I apologize again for the black screen with my name on it. I really do. This is the first time I have ever run into this problem. <laughs> and so I don't know how to fix it. Yet. Yeah. Well, you, you sound clear as a bell. So that's, you know, at the end of the day, we got to hear you. And that's the most important thing. We, your, your voice was heard. So there you go. Thank in you more so ways much. than one, Abby. Exactly. I see what you did there. <laughs> but also, if it has to happen to a group, it's this is the good place to have that happen. So fix it for whoever your next fancy people are. But we we will, if it had to break, let it We're break. chill. We're, We're chill. Understandable. I, I literally have it all queued up to have a call through to support to try and figure it out because all of the troubleshooting I did while we were on this internally kept bouncing back like, nope, that didn't work. Nope, that didn't work. I'm like, are you kidding me? Well, it, this was your passion pushing back <laughs> in the form of tech difficulties. Yes, we um, have a giveaway. Ooh. We're doing live giveaways with all of our panels, so be sure to also attend the last panel of the day. Um, 
but the item for now, oh, I love this one. Um, we are giving away a Mother's Day lasagna delivery, which is any lasagna and a bouquet of flowers from Send a Friend Lasagna. And the winner is, we're putting them in the generator, so uh, okay. it is random. Roxanne Shirley. Yay! <laughs> so congratulations, Roxanne. Um, we will get in touch with you on how you can claim that. You're welcome. Yay. I'm so glad. I love I love every time I get to do this because I feel like Oprah. <gasps> I want that. Um, I wish you would do an Oprah voice. I don't know. Like, it's I lasagna. It. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna, you're very good at oh, that. That's good. You should do all of our giveaways. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes, and then um, Shana from Rock up uh, from Roxanne. I'm sorry, lots of things. I'm very tired. Uh, from Invoke, will be leading um, another yoga stretch today before that final panel. So at two fifteen, jump in to the panel, and it'll give you the yoga stretch. And then at the very end, so at the end of that last panel, at three o'clock, we will say our goodbyes. And we are giving away a one night stay at the Conrad. And I'm pretty sure it comes, I'm pretty sure, should I, I should check this. I'm pretty sure it comes with ballet and brunch. And if it doesn't, now I'll cover that because I just said it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think it does. So yeah, stick around for the end of that last panel of the day. And again, thank you, Abby. You're such a pro and Paulina and Pippa. So are you. I put links to Pattern and Pippa's website as well as the Shift Up Now where you can join as a member for both of those. Um, so please do. We want to keep Pippa racing. We want to keep Pattern here in Indy, selfishly, as much as we possibly can. Um, but we also know that you need to share all of your wonderful talents, both of you, with the world. So keep keep doing that and let us know how we can support you. Um, if you are registered for workshops, we have uh, the How to Pitch Your Passion coming up at 145. So we'll take a break and then see you all again a bit later. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thanks. Bye.